So welcome, welcome to uh, World Wisdom Circle. Um, there are another 10 people, I think, booked to come in, so hopefully they will join us. Um, I think there's a great deal of um, activity everywhere in the world that we we all are focused in many, many different directions. And um, one of the things I was reflecting on this morning was that there seems to be, apart from the known uh, turbulent times on the news, obviously, with wars and issues everywhere, it feels like there's turbulence in everybody's lives. I don't know whether that is something that um, strikes a chord with you. Uh, it's like there's every day there's something that turns up which is fabulous and also something that is why did that happen? Um, and some of them are very soul-searching issues. And the question that I posed for this wisdom circle was um, was really about this notion of social justice that's been talked about a lot. I don't know whether that is something you've come across. Um, it turned up recently in a in something that my husband actually had to write for a consultative body that was writing to the UN about social justice and how were we going to create social justice. And I wondered whether it was another cover for gender equality or equality or harmony or whatever it is that we're all searching for, um, where there is upset and uh, challenges. and. It, it occurred to me, and this is why I put it on my poster, which I hopefully you saw, is how can we have social justice if we don't have women at the table with men making some of the major decisions? And I, and I don't know how that resonates with all of you um, or what actually you think it, social justice means, because it feels like another um, heading that's turning up in our lives as diversity, equity and inclusion did or in the past other words uh, and obviously the idea of gender equality. So in our pursuit of authentic harmony and looking at the differences between men and women and also men and women everywhere in the world and boys and girls, um, I was actually just briefly this morning coming on this morning, I was watching a, a live streaming about um, energy between US and Africa and China, all about trade. And where does social justice come into economic development? And I suppose my question to all of you is who falls through the cracks? Because I think when things are tumultuous in the world, um, there are obviously many, many, many victims, but women tend to get the worst end of economic downturn and wars and social injustice. So is that where it comes from? So I wanted just to um, think about how we bring our world into a better place and what wisdom we could actually share um, and what your feeling is about the injustice it, between men and women. And I always preface this that it, this is not about only women, but in terms of, of my passion to help other people understand what's going on is how we find harmony. So I spoke in my posts on LinkedIn and, and Facebook about the orchestra and the harmony. How do we create the music of differences? And what what does that benefit us in terms of business or our own world or our family or our country? Um, are we, it's like, what is it we're missing? Because I feel like we, I know we might say we haven't been to this particular situation before in our world, but we have, you know, we keep on coming back round and round and round to things that are traumatic for people. And I feel that there are ways that we can if we focus on harmony as opposed to 
equality or striving or fighting. You know, why does anybody want to fight anybody? Now, it's not about, for me, it's not about taking sides, so I'm not being political or anything here. It's just how do we stop the violence? How do we stop gender-based violence in particular? Um, and there's an event going on as we speak in uh, Marrakesh, for which one of our wisdom tribe, Fumza Diani, she's actually at, as I speak, and she is there with her um management team but the one of the guys who's there is Dr. Jibril Diallo who um, is the CEO of the African Renaissance Dysphoria Network and he's very much talking about stopping gender-based violence so the issues between women and men are still paramount in this wisdom today so what I'd love to know is what when you hear the word social justice what does it what does it give to you what, is it something which is way up there and it's only politicians do, or is it something really that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so I'm going to invite you to tell me just briefly, what do you think social justice is if we can have uh, an equal balance between men and women? Is it possible? And what's the key? What is the key? Um, Pauline, <laughs> I think that this is a lot um, deeper and a lot more complicated than what we actually think it is because everything starts with self. And if we as individuals, whether we are male or female, men or women, can embrace all of what makes who we are, because we come from a male and a female through a womb, every single human being, right? So there's not one that's better than the other one. Both are necessary for humanity to even exist. So it starts at that level. You know, if you're fragmented within, whether you're a male or a female, a man or a woman, the worldview that you have will continue being fragmented because you cannot give something that you don't have starting at that core level. So it starts with that and then it just keeps, you know, expanding. Um, so it's not something that can be tried to be fixed. Otherwise it's just a bandaid that we're putting on and the, the, the cancer that's eating all of this is the pointing finger at the other person. And it's, it's the man's fault. No, it's the woman's fault. No, it's the man's fault. We are better. No, we are better. So it's this constant division. And when there is division, anything can conquer us. Um, I just, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, Philip's put a comment up there, and I was going to ask Philip to respond. We often talk about simple complexity. So, my, is it complicated, Philip? Yes. <laughs> but can In my, we rule a way of dealing with questions and answering them? The answer is yes. It is complicated, um, and it's complicated because we're human, and it's simple because we're human. It's very simple to accept someone for who they are and it's very complicated to cope with your own feelings about who the, that other individual is if they do say or pre present themselves in ways which horrify you or make you feel uncomfortable. And that's why I put that the key for me is about acceptance because if you can accept someone for who they are at face value, and we can all look at each other on this screen and make assumptions about that's a nice person, maybe that isn't such a nice person, etc. We do that around the world. And that's when the divisions begin. And that's when well, you're not like me. So therefore, you're not part of my group. Therefore, the binary system says, if you're not part with me, you must be against me. 
because you're not part of who I am or how I am. And it's that binary simplicity which I think causes the complexity of the arguments as to why we should exclude certain individuals or exclude certain groups or exclude countries or cause other people harm or indignity. And I'll stop there because that's quite enough simple complexity or complex simplicity. Thank you. Thank you. So again, to um, I'm going to um, invite um, Patty because we haven't seen each other for some time, Patty. And when I was in California, and uh, we were this was in 2018. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, what does social justice mean to you in a very simple sense? if it's possible to be simple? Well, social justice, I've been dealing with social justice and involved with social justice for so many years. And it's it's a fundamental principle. It's what Philip and Hadassah, was it Hadassah um, mentioned? Um, social justice is one, being centered, aligned and grounded in yourself and allowing others to be who they are. And I know you didn't want to get into the political stuff. However, everything has politics in it. I mean, at least from what I've been experiencing in the last 60 plus years, um, it, it's doing our, doing what we have been called to do and modeling that for the other person and as Philip says, it starts by, okay, I'm gonna look at the screen. Who's a good person here? Who's not a good person? Or how is that person being? Or what's in their background? And and anyhow, it's, it's really back to that fundamental basic, we're human beings <laughs> and we are gonna have differences. And I've been around the executive table that you talk about, Pauline, um, I've been, you know, in that corporate realm and I've been in, now I'm in that right brain world where my, most of my work is about social justice and uh, all of the, the changes that have taken place, very little bit of changes, you know, racially and women, you speak about women. Um, I, I, I firmly believe that until the majority of women from all walks of life, until the majority come together, we are going to be in this unfit situation or dysfunction. Thank you for, for that. Um, um, I, I do concur with that. I, I look at what is happening in the world where there's so much fighting um, and it feels like women are not geared to fighting. Um, I'm just taking a look at um, what um, well, our Queen has said in South Africa. Um, I think it's mostly, com I'm just going to read your comment, um, Kosi. I think it's most complicated because we have complicated things for ourselves. We have un natured nature that's an interesting very interesting comment so much we have caused ourselves confusion social justice to me means mutual respect and tolerance for one another i and with no um no criticism of of men on this call because you're here because you're wise but i do feel the imbalance in the world if you think about the fact that half the world is female 3.9 billion women um, and 2.2 .2 billion are mothers. How does that work in a world where we're essentially at war? So we're literally at war and we have toxicity in the in the boardroom, we have domestic violence, we have gender-based violence. And obviously that occurs in different countries in different ways. Um, and I, I noted that there was uh, this big meeting in Mar Marrakesh just now where Dr. Jibril Dalla is talking about gender-based violence. Um, I don't know the actual numbers in the room, but most of the main talk speakers are, are male. It's an observation, not a criticism. 
I noted at the G20, which was held in India recently, um, out of 50 leaders who came together, two were female. Um, so, so my view is that we can't get a change until the majority of women also come together with some sense of synergy and energy and harmony themselves within the female um, cohort. Um, and and yes. potentially we don't always have harmony within women. And that creates a, an additional uh, caveat of what is happening in the main arena. So I, I'd like to um, invite Robert. I know you had some very good points when we met after the first conversation. Is social justice too big a thing to deal with or can we actually become more aware of each other in a simple way? So a number of cliches are going, thanks for the question. A number of cliches are going through my head. So um, what I'm about to say, you might think are cute cliches or useless cliches. Uh, every big win consists of a thousand and one small wins. So this is a big, a BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal. I think that's the acronym, BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goal. So I think there's valuable, I think there's value in putting on paper, what does crawl, walk, run look like? What might be these 1,001 small wins? Um, and what sequence of wins is unrealistic to get a firm grasp of what uh, a waste of time or an, an illogical sequence of 1001 small wins looks like so that it's easier to cut through the noise, collaborate, get on paper, what would be a reasonable small win? What would be the first 10 wins? Just to have some momentum. Um, and, and anytime there's paralysis or deer in the headlights glazing over, I think there's value in identifying what bad looks like. Yeah. Uh, what bad behavior, and I'll pick up, I'm a man, so I'll pick on men. Uh, what does bad behavior look like? Make it easy for women to recognize what bad looks like, what unacceptable behavior looks like, and uh, create the script to give women or anyone the confidence, the muscle memory of knowing what your options are and what to do. Um, so I lean into my performing arts background quite a bit. So whether it's improv, playing yes and, uh, I, I think that um, I think that muscle memory to give victims uh, or the damaged of, so of social injustice, give them a script so that once the curtain is up and it's opening night and the shit's going down, you kind of know what to do. Um, I'll, I'll, that's a lot, so I'll pause. Yes, I, I really like that. I, I hope I, others mm -hmm. like that as well. I like the idea of the small wins and giving them a script is something that we do with our gender dynamics um, work. And um, I do use ChatGBT to help me, but I think it's okay, anything that helps. Um, most of us, I think, are aware of the visual auditory, kinesthetic um, parameters, uh, transactional analysis, you know, lots of things out there about how we understand relationships and differences. So with our work with gender dynamics and different types, um, Philip referred to his rule away and know that it's on his thing. I'm going to change mine to say magician because um, it's, uh, it's a handle to how to understand the scripts. So I'm not necessarily going into the, the detail, but most of here on the, on the screen know something around what kind of archetype we are. Um, and I'm going to go to Christine in a minute because you've got your hand up. But Christine and I ran... Uh, a really amazing workshop last week. Hadassah was there with us and, and some others. Musay was there. Musay, you were there. Um, but actually dig, deep diving into some of the characteristics on basic archetypes helped us really to understand and made some real amazing revelations. And I think that for me is, is the 
many of the 1,001 small wins. Um, I know when people recognize how they deal with a difficult, unacceptable behavior in somebody else by understanding themselves and the other person without going into an argument or a face-to-face -face with that person, they learn ways to script a, a complementary, harmonious outcome without necessarily having to tell the other person why they've done it, how they've done it. Um, so Christine, we were there together on our, our program. How does our work fit in with these ideas? Um, it's interesting that Robert brought up the, the term script because that popped in my head this morning because we have so many examples of what is in social justice, what is the division, what's very complex, what you know, is polarizing for us and the how, how could we possibly know the how of, of doing it if the examples are so, you know, horrendous. So that idea of, yeah, if we could provide a script of just the beginning steps of the how to converse, the how to broach the subject, how to gingerly walk into it with respect and honor. Um, yeah, it, and again, know thyself. The experience we had last week in the archetypes, which was, again, for me, for someone who wasn't actually creating in the moment, I was creating in my mind my own visual archetype story, but it was so beautiful to hear everybody tap into a new sense of self and to be able to communicate that, even if it was just as simple of, like Hadassah said, I am a magician, but I have that ruler in me, that little ruler side of me. It's good to know that, that that exists there. But, you know, who who are you at your core? So if you know yourself at the core, then you can begin to maybe write your own script on how you step into this arena of, of you know, social justice. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And it, it, it was uh, the revelations in a workshop like that are the starting point. Uh, I think um, uh, these Robert's put there, bad ideas can be a bridge to a good idea. Um, I just want to give a quick example. I was doing a, a lecture to uh, some students at London Metropolitan University one time, and uh, we actually had a little session on what is bad behavior. So if you all think about what do you think is bad behavior? And so everybody came up with the classics, you know, obviously killing somebody, raping, you know, there are some classic bad behavior. But one boy in the class said, people being unpunct unpunctual. And the rest of the class laughed at him. I said, hey, if that's his standard for bad behavior, then that is bad behavior in his so people turning up late, upset him, angered him, annoyed him, maybe because he's a very punctual person. But it's recognizing that um, there's classic bad behavior. I think, I don't, you know, not having abuse. But how do we look at the minute ones that sometimes are un, um, our natural bias in somebody, but we don't like the way they are? Um, and in, I like that instantly laughing at ideas is, is is bad behavior, that's another one. Anybody got any other ones that uh, are your favorite bad behavior? Um, I'll share, I'll share a, a gender dynamics one. Um, I'm a magician and I usually say what, and my husband's a philosopher and he always says why. So when we're in the car and I'm driving and he says, why didn't you take that second lane to the left? It totally annoys me because I don't know why I didn't take the lane to the left. I just didn't. Um, but it's uh, <clears throat> there are personal irritations that can look uh, like bad behavior, but we're looking at um, the ability to play yes and. The inability to play yes and is perhaps not bad behavior, but it is competitive disadvantage. The main thing for me is that if we can talk about the things that we are upset about, we can move away from those bad behaviors becoming um, social injustices. 
Um, so who 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 hasn't had a, a word in here yet? Um, yeah, there's one from Philip. Someone not looking at me when I'm talking to them. Can I interject for a second? Um, yes. We have to be very careful when we're calling certain things bad behavior, right? Yes. Because what may be bad behavior in one culture is not bad behavior in another one. So, for example, in certain cultures, if an adult is speaking to you and yes. you look at them in the eye, you're being disrespectful. Okay? Absolutely. In other cultures, if vice versa you know and i i dealt with that coming from a different culture and moving to the us as a yes. middle school kid and there were certain things that i did that were absolutely normal in my home in my culture but then in the american culture it was viewed as i was being a very disrespectful little girl when in fact i wasn't i was aligning to the respectful behavior that my parents taught me in my culture. So who decides what is good or bad behavior? We need to look at bad behavior is whatever causes harm, actual harm to another human being. That's bad behavior. That's how I see it. Yes, and, and I agree. And that, that was really my understanding when this young boy said what he said, because I thought, his view of the world is his view of the world. It's having the conversation. And especially when we travel into different cultures, the cultural norm, uh, for instance, on gender-based violence is, is very different. We, we, can't, we can't consciously know what it's like if we don't actually live in the culture where things are happening. I've been blessed to live in three different, main different cultures, England, Malaysia, and now US, and, and very different. And it takes some time to realize, oh, that's just not the way I, I I experienced my whole life. But for me, the key is having the conversation and having the sensitivity to be aware um, of fundamental different behavior patterns. Um, I mean, Malaysia, Malaysian women don't shake hands with men. I mean, that was a very practical big one that I... I didn't realize until I actually lived there. Um, so I I agree. And I think when we look at social justice, we can't look at it without looking at individual cultural norms. We also have, um, so we have uh, Kosi, who's from South Africa, and we have Musay, who's Ethiopian, and there's another different culture there. So that's right, isn't it, Musay? Are yes, you with us? I'm, like, I'm with you guys. I just muted it because there is a noise here. I don't want to disturb. So the, the in in Ethiopia would there there would be a different culture again about what is bad, what is bad behavior. Absolutely. I mean, like um for instance, uh when you're greeting someone here, we can uh, basically say hi, whatever, but they prefer to have a handshake. You know what I mean? So if, if you don't display that kind of gesture, they may assume that, oh, he's not well, you know, well behaved or my, minor things like that. But that doesn't mean that's a bad behavior. Like as uh, what's, uh, Hadessa said, just because, you know, the, the cultural variation may have different things that doesn't represent what we, you know, what we think that it's a good behavior or bad behavior here in the US. So I think she stated it very well. Thank you. Um, and Daniel, your thoughts, you're quite there. Oh, do, yeah. Are you speaking to me? Yes, I was saying, what, what are your thoughts on, on what we're talking about? Yeah, like everybody's been saying, some bad behavior, so something that came up uh, in my mind was that uh, interrupting people, especially in a business setting um, and more in the masculinity aspect of it is, um, you know, you see that a lot in the workplace in the uh, in the U.S. at least that I've been, I've been a part of um, where men, women are speaking their minds, coming up with ideas like you guys mentioned, and then uh, men speaking over them. That's a really bad behavior that uh, I've 
I became a part of. Um, and then kind of speaking on what uh, Musi had just uh, mentioned, I actually took an international business course about how different perceptions in different in different uh, countries. One of them that really stuck out to me was even exchanging business cards. You know, in the America, if you exchange business cards, it's a quick glance at it and you give it away or put it away in your pocket. Um, in some cultures, they want you to look at it multiple times, it, receive it with both hands, um, just little things that you wouldn't expect if you're not aware of when you're traveling to different countries, something that could um, really be disrespectful in some countries compared to here. Thank you. And um, and uh, one of the things that, that occurs to me in coming from the social justice idea down to our individual experience of something that's offensive. So is, and we don't necessarily, I use the expression bad behavior. I don't know whether any of you remember, there was um, a comedy program in England, a long time ago called, called Men Behaving Badly. Um, and it was, it was very funny, but it, 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 it polarized the extreme issues between men and women that come from um, core uh, archetypal patterns of behavior. Um, so, you talked about comedy as well, Robert. I mean, is there a way we can diffuse things? But comedy and laughter and com comedic interpretations is different in different cultures as well. So you've got a cultural overlay where being aware of offense or aware that somebody is just not tuning in, they're not playing their instrument correctly in the orchestra. But we can only know our own instrument. We can only know what we're doing first. How do we get to a, a collective awareness that we can bring, if you like, kind of a, a social moral standard to the world between men and women? So still focusing on, uh, I think, in a way, what Patty was saying, you know, and I believe the way through the turbulent times is for women to have a greater place at the table, but not aggressively. And that's that's a pitch for me, is not aggressively. Uh, it, we, our nature as women is not a fighting nature. I, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I don't mean not standing up for things, but literally um, not aggressive. Clara? Yeah, I, I concur with all, all the points uh, being made and good afternoon, everybody. Um, so just to pick slightly back up on, on what Philip was talking about, for me, it's very much, uh, particularly women to men um, and men to women, is the taking the consideration of the whole person, including the whole view of a person, um, I think there's still a massive gender bias um, in the workplace we can see that in our own uk houses of parliament um so it, it's really for me it's it's without and actually it plays out i've written here so to pick up on another point uh, bridging the gaps between behavior in cultures uh, and religion and religion particularly and i think the shaking of the hand comes from the muslim uh, culture and I, I think, you know, we need to look at holistically within a country, bridging the gaps between all cultures so that when women are doing business, irrespective of what religion it is, there is there's a code of contact, con, uh, conduct um, that and going back to that scripted aspect, I, I really uh, scribbled that down as a note, because, again, it's what are we what are we doing away with? What are we calling um, outmoded negative ways of behaving, particularly um, men to women? I, I've heard so many reports since being the UK chair, particularly where, um, and I'm not saying all men. This is a generalisation, but where men feel that they can speak in a certain way to women because it's always been done that way. And it's almost, I mean, let's take Russell Brunt. I mean, I don't know if he's a good example or not, but Ru Russell Brunt, yeah, Brad, what's his name? The guy that's the, the the character that's come up for all the earlier sex charges from his earlier life, you know, and some of the things oh. he was saying to, to women, um, and not just him, but many men, are, are completely um, irrelevant. 
they are completely not necessary in contexts of work and business and transactional relationships. And I think we need to look at what we're calling out as, as um, un, you know, unfair biased behavior between the sexes, the assumptions that we make between the sexes. So I know Philip called that, you know, the binary, what's good, what's bad. And I, I do want to pick back up on that because for me, that is a massive consideration that when I w walk into a workplace, you know, I come with that uh, almost buddhic uh, place of no ju no judgment on a person and until you see what the possibilities open up between people. And I, I think before we've discussed in various other of, of our wisdom circles that, you know, what are the possibilities that open up between two people or two companies or two countries, rather than just say you're wrong and you're wrong, which just creates this aggressive nature. Whereas I think women come to the table, I'm not saying all women, because I think there are men also, I've had incredible men, particularly over this whole Gaza thing, you know, where they come and they say, what are, what are the possibilities? What do we need to happen to come to some uh amazing resolution where where it's a win-win for all parties or both sides and i think business has and throughout our history is is become more about um there's a what there's only one winner and it, it's this aggressive kind of stance that that plays out in politics it plays out in business and I think when women and, and sort of what I call spiritualized men come to the table, they're, they're looking for how can we make this good for everybody? How is this going to benefit you, you and, and, and our customer or and our country or whatever it is? So, so for me, calling out and, and having some of these scripts, of, as, as Robert said, is that, you know, the 101, the 1001, we've got to start for me, coming up with new cons of co co conducts, codes of conduct with what is good behavior, what really is fundamentally good behavior. I mean, for me, on a personal level, I, I wrote down that, um, where have I written it down? I've written a lot of notes as we were talking, but, um, you know, back to that knowing thyself, it's, it's being listened to and not being talked over. It's about uh, having my view heard, whether it's, you know, whether it's a, accepted as what's going to go forward, but it, I'm still appreciated and, you know, not, not shaking my hand because I'm a woman. I'm sorry, in this day and age of 21st century, that doesn't wash for me. That That is appalling that, that those dictates of, of female suppression are still creeping through in unusual, shall we call them, ways, you know. And so I think for women to really feel fully liberated and safe, we also need to be looking at those religious and cultural uh, superstitious beliefs that no longer wash with all the, the new understanding of our physiology as actual human beings, you know. Um, and so, and so I, I'd like to conclude with that to say actually, as a female, a liberated female, um, my physiology it shouldn't come into whether I can do good business or whether I, you know, um, can have a good conversation with a variety of different people. You know, I, I think that's incredibly patronizing and, and not necessary anymore. So I think, yeah, there are lots of things that I think we've all touched upon that I, I agree with. Yeah, so uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I think we just have to be careful how we navigate this balance between aggressiveness and assertiveness because uh, mm -hmm. that's what assertiveness can be seen different. So, working in a Malaysian culture, I had a, pro a contract with a, a top Malaysian uh, government body. Uh, and a man at the top said, this program is for our women, top women, and we want them to be assertive, but nice. We want them to be bold, but, and it, the, it really was bold, but not too assertive. So everything is gradations from a cultural norm. These women were all fabulous and very intelligent. And in that particular culture, the the male was, was a dominant feature in most 
uh, meetings, but they dealt with it in a way that made them feel good and honored their um, cultural base. And so learning about ourselves and learning about individuals who are different to each other, uh, and that's what we we find when we're working with our archetypes, there's sometimes potential uh, natural biases that we don't like in different uh, archetypes, but that's the learning that we found is most useful, the ruler, the philosopher, the magician, and the sovereign. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you know, as hopefully you all understand, maybe um, uh, my queen Cosia doesn't, but the we did talk about this when we met, that if the ruler is being very bullet point and uh, very focused on the task, and the philosopher wants to talk in a much more gentle, uh, in, inquisitive, theoretical way, these men sometimes might not see each other as the same type of man and fall out, but they may also see how complementary they are and work mm. well together. Same with, with women. And I think, again, it's for me, it's understanding that when things are different, we either decide that they're different and difficult or that we decide they're different and great and we're going to explore what the greatness is, but we need to have conversations. And I wrote last week about conversations that matter. And interesting enough, I used chat GPT to ask questions about the four archetypes. Uh, and I said, you know, how would these archetypes approach this situation or this situation? And it was fascinating, the subtle differences. And, and I, I recommend that, that you read some of those scripts because it's a simple nuance of asking a question with a what instead of a why or a, a where or a who that may actually change the way I interact with somebody else. Uh, it's the subtlety of that. Um, so I was wondering in terms of the 1001 steps, 1001 wins, that's right. Um, what would be a first win when we look at in your in your own culture, when we look at a win where women can be placed at a decision making table, uh, and what I mean by that is that the majority, and I'm not saying that places like the UN and 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 other places are actually instrumental in making change, but in in most of those places, there are majority men. So how do we what would be a one small win where women could be best heard for being women and not from a, a feminist or emp empowerment point of view? Uh, Musa, you have your hand up, so I respect that. What would you like to say? So, what I was trying to uh, say was, um, you know, I have a daughter that is currently in medical school. She's majoring in pre-med as well as like pre-law. And she was in Ethiopia, for instance, and when she was seventh grade. And she did some intern kind of thing in the hospital and then in a law firm setting. Okay. And then one of the things that she was observed, she observed was how much the male figures are significant. And she hasn't uh, seen anyone as a physician on a administrative area or in a law firm as an administrative area so one of our discussion was like how I how is your country going to figure out to resolve this because she was born here in the U.S. she's you know so now years later having that discussion we have now a young prime minister came into power and he started making this significant change he's bringing a lot of female uh, into the hierarchy in governance. But the thing is, the people are still complaining why female, even the female uh, from, you know, uh, previous era still existing, they're thinking male should be on that hierarchy level, but not the female. You see? So they have that mindset. But the thing is, the woman performed a way better than man for the past four decades you know yes. 
And I see this, you know, this, uh, uh, I don't see it lightly because social justice is fairness. And yeah. I, we need to have female figures, you know, in every aspect of our decision making. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I see what uh, 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 Clara was saying. And uh, I was just trying to throw that out. Thank you. Um, one thing I just want to ask for clarity, what is ADKAR? -A -A you can't put an acronym without telling me what it is. Robert. So it is my preferred, and it's, it's really the first framework I was introduced to in the discipline of change management. ADKAR what? stands for awareness, oh. desire, awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, reinforcement. So there's countless sources. YouTube, ProSci is the company that owns the intellectual property for the framework. Um, it's what I'm pursuing for my books and body, body work. Um, and so a first step in moving a population from point A to point B, there, there are probably a dozen frameworks. Cotter, K-O-T-T-E-R is another really common framework. And I'll spare you the reasons why I choose EDCAR, but for moving a population, you can't expect them to jump to KAR, knowledge, ability, reinforcement. They first have to be aware that change is coming, aware that there is a problem. And so my point about EDCAR and for an early small win uh, would be focusing on awareness. Um, the, the other pieces of what I put in the, in the chat window is that uh, it's an American football analogy is don't run downfield until you catch the ball. So uh, what that means to this initiative is that before you blaze trails and, and risk getting ahead of yourself, what would catching the ball look like? And I think that is having a reasonably aligned grasp of what is the problem we are trying to solve. So um, being articulate, being succinct about one or more, and, and maybe there's more than one problem statement. Um, that's very possible. But I think that there's value when you get stakeholders to the table to help with this initiative. Um, you have to know what is the trigger? Why is the status quo unacceptable? What is the problem we are trying to solve? So I, I think there's value in in formulating the problem statement or problem statements, how what would ADCAR look like? And again, a, a bad idea would be approaching first your biggest contrarians, your late adopters. So by process of elimination, the best population to approach first are early adopters. Yes. Um, so, so I would just like to propose those three ingredients for, um, and again, this might've been something that I'm responding to Dylan. I can't, I can't remember exactly who I'm responding to, but I believe there's value in thinking about what would, I, what would ADCAR tell us to do? What is the problem statement or statements? What are we trying to solve to get alignment and exposure and awareness of what is the problem, problems that we're trying to solve? And you can't boil the ocean. You can't go to everyone with a one size fits all message. Mm -hmm. And you need small you need small groups of allies. Well, I I think they're definitely we need um we need champions who understand that when uh, men and women are in harmony, which is a deep understanding of our differences and our values and our traits and our talents and everything that comes together then we actually get a better outcome. Um, there was a, a great example. Um, I think it was a huge pharmaceutical company, but one division, where I read this story, they, the boss was a male of this division, but he decided having read the evidence about women achieving a lot in corporate arenas, uh, he actively put in place women into roles of significance, mixed teams, really worked to make it work 
not to see from an emotional point of view, but because he'd read the evidence, but he didn't tell the other divisions. And over a couple of years, the other divisions kept on noticing that his division was much more productive and much more efficient and much more pro pro profitable. And every time they knocked on his door and said, how are you doing this? He said, I'm not going to tell you yet. Like, go away, because I want to prove this. And I think there's an element, uh, certainly in some male leaders, where if we can find those and they prove it, they will then talk about it because they have the uh, physical evidence for it. Um, Hadassah, you have your hand up. Yeah, so this has been running through my mind ever since Musay spoke about his daughter's experience and how some women, even in those circles, still viewed the male as the ultimate leader, right? And then I thought about what Robert said about the those that are that embrace the early adoption. So I've been part of those too. So there was a point in my life in which I honestly believed that women were not to ever speak or teach men ever. And I honestly believe that that was the right thing to believe. So no matter how much somebody from the outside would come to me and try to explain to me why that doesn't actually um, work and it's not reality, it would have never penetrated. I would have never listened. Okay, So I had to go through different phases in my life to then become that one person that was part of the early adoption. Now, when I was mentally prepared to hear that, when it was presented to me, I was like, oh, that actually makes sense. But when my mind was so closed up prior to that, there's absolutely no way that anything would have penetrated. So going back to what Robert said, you have to go after those that do embrace the early adoption because ultimately those that are up there at that level that nothing gets through, they'll start seeing certain changes and something yeah. will happen where they'll start thinking differently and then they'll open their heart to welcome a different way of thinking and a different way of doing things. I, I agree. And I mean, I've, I've always been looking for the um the wise early adopters which i suspect is all of you because otherwise you wouldn't be here um <laughs> but um i i do want to re refer to what i'm i'm multitasking i'm reading the sidebar philip you wrote um and i agree i don't think we're looking for me sometimes i'm not looking to fix what's wrong i'm looking to what's in the future and that might be um you know the blank <laughs> sheet of paper how can we create the future and i know that's that's um I think Robert sees that as a, a big a big ask and then uh, maybe I should be more practical and grounded. But I think if we all said, what would, what would the future be like if we could really start anything? So in our wisdom circles in, in the G100, where um, I have chairs in 17 countries, we ask those women to say, what would you like to stop? Absolutely. You know, what is so toxic or bad that you really don't want it ever to be there again? What would you like to continue that's evolving and that is happening as good state of, of being for men or women? And what would you really like to start, which is totally different? How could we be, um, imagine, like imagine before we knew AI was possible. It's what is our new um, impossible, uh, imaginative, amazing thing. For me, it's people truly understanding themselves so well that every time there's a difficult situation or conversation, they know how to manage it. So for me, that would be, uh, and you know, and there was total respect from men to women and women to women and men to men and generations to generations and cultures to cultures. So that would be my my dream future is how that would be possible. Like I imagine all of us know how to multiply numbers. So you know what five times five is. When did you learn that? How did you learn that? So it was so natural. You just did it without a calculator or now use a calculator. I would like that to be that everybody understands their archetypes so well 
they can manage multiple different conversations. So that would be would be my dream ahead. Um, so um, the framework, yes, the framework for our, our groups is what do we want to absolutely stop? What do we want to start? And that continue bridge in the middle. And that would apply to your own culture and your own, if you like, your own top social issue issue, social justice issue, because there are many um, when we break down to uh, toxic issues in the world. Um, and then Robert offers another one there, which is using the I like, I wish, I hope, and I wonder. So uh, we can look at that. I wanted to bring this towards some um, action is, um, and we've talked about this before at other wisdom circles, but how can we find the examples and find them quickly of a very influential people who will support what we're talking about in terms of true um, equality, social justice, whatever it is, but really allowing women to be at the table who already do it. I mean, my favorite is Richard Branson because I know that he has a very, um, in my view of studying him, he has a very uh, balanced way of looking at people. I would regard him as a philosopher in, in our gender dynamics framework. Um, it doesn't mean to say we can't find wise rulers as Philip is a wise ruler. Um, and and making sure that we, um, Patty, yes, I get your message. Thank you, Patty. If you have to go, that's fine. Thank you. I'll send you the recording. Thank you for being here. Um, is how do we get some, this is what I'm looking for, is how do we get some mainline um, credibility, newsworthiness? Uh, I actually was invited to a possible conference in Morocco in December, which was going to be full of high level government women. Now maybe I worked with government women in Malaysia before now, I don't know whether they're the instrument of change. My gut feeling is it's it's wise men, um, but I, I want to find the, I want to do the, the ground 1,001 1, wins, but I want to find some key top players who will be our wins and who will say yes. We're going to take this into our organization or our, dare I say, nation. Where, where could we find that? And um, maybe we'll find that in South Africa with uh, my beautiful friend here, who, the Queen, who is still online, um, that we could work in different parts of the world and maybe find those examples of people who are prepared to stand up and say that authentic harmony actually works and it works fiscally as well as um, you know, heartfeltly. That's not the right word. I can't think. My my brain's starting to slow down now. <laughs> um, but I know that 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 there is um, there's something around belief um, as opposed to hope. I don't want to hope that this happens. I want to believe that it is happening. Um, and um, I came across this just the other day. I went to something where this, these these um, these guys actually took a, a small plane around the world for ninety days to bring the end to polio. So it sounds like a different example, but there's a there's a mission statement in Rotary which is uh, to bring hope to the world. And this guy at the end of his presentation said, "So do you have hope that we'll end polio?" And everybody in the room said, "Yes." And he said, I don't. And we were stunned. We said, what? He said, no, I don't hope. I believe. No. I believe we will end polio. Apparently there's only 10 cases in the world now. Um, oh, that's cool. But it's about, I, I really struck me that as I want to believe that we have an opportunity to change the world round mm -hmm. through women but not through the traditional women empowerment feminist kind of approach, but through this harmony with men who understand the benefits 
out there like the guy who run that ran that division and he took active steps to change things but it takes time and we that that's the thing it takes time and it takes belief so as we we go just to this last section is is what what one win would you do in your world what 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 one win would you start with would you commit to the power of belief yes equal seats at the table no matter what and i i think as well christine it doesn't necessarily have to be 50 50 but it has to be conscious conscious awareness of different types of people at the table and the and the true listening to those perspectives if we're going to create the world in a totally different way if that is possible we don't actually know what it is yet um yeah sort of, to be able to speak freely and yes. to not be diminished at all for what you say yes yeah what one thing would you do Clara well I just on a personal level um I'm finding the courage to step up and use my voice for change you know simple as that my own life story and that that I think ripples out in your own community wherever you are um but I think I think the the change for humanity i i feel like it's something around and i need to dig into this a little bit more but i feel like it's around uh stretching beyond what we previously thought was possible and um believing that that's the case you know so in other words we take off our blinkers and our judgments um so i think i think it's as simple as that for me Okay, I'm going to ask, um, Cosy, Cosy, can you hear me? Is there something you would like to um, share with us from South Africa? Do you have a, can you hear me? Dr. Pauline, yes, I can hear you. Have you and enjoyed being I... here? <laughs> of course, of course. Uh, I, I think it is really who I am you know and i say that because you can imagine um royalty in general is a is very patriotic it's a patriarchal system okay. and um a lot of what we do especially as coming in as a woman i take and i'll make an example with myself that our lineage started in 1833, and I'm the first female ruler of my wow. tribe. Mm -hmm. So, um, the you know the topics such as this are, are, are very intense. They're very deep. Um, so, as you're speaking, uh, I'm listening carefully and. You know, I'm, I, it says to me more and more, we need to really unpack um, because at times we just kind of scratch on the surface yes. and never really get to the crux. And that's why I use um, the unnaturing nature phrase. We have unnatured nature because nature is about balance, it's about coexistence, it's about mutual respect, the ecosystem. You know, everything respects each other and it, it causes harmony. Um, there's never conflict in nature. So um, it is that uh, uh, mutual respect, to uh, tolerance, um, understanding that each and every role player is very important. They also have um, a part to contribute, which is also very critical in making uh, mm. the ecosystem work. Mm. Um, so 
yes, it's a conversation. <clears throat> and in particular, I, I'm, I've really, really, really loved um, the, 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 the concept of harmony because uh, I, I said in one of the, the comments I made, we have complicated things for ourselves because of these terms that we we use you know um then tomorrow it's inequality and then there's feminism and we we misunderstand them so it becomes political um phrases that lose the essence of what they, they were meant to achieve but when we say harmony harmony uh, resonates with nature nature which is something you know the force of nature is something that you can't do undo it it, it 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 flows naturally and that's how it's supposed to be we are not supposed to be in conflict uh, the gender issue because that's why uh, i think somebody earlier said um we need a male and female to to co-create or Absolutely. to co-produce and that I, harmony. Yes. Um, thank yeah. you so thank you so much. Um, um, and um, this is one of the things that you and I connected with when I stood on the stage in September and I, I talked about authentic harmony. So thank you so much for your contribution. I really appreciate that. And hopefully we can um, we can help you with your mission in South Africa to bring harmony to your people. Um, I think it, it takes it takes a leader to really make a difference. And I think Cosi has given us a fantastic example uh, of, of where a woman coming into power can change the balance. Now, it doesn't always happen. Uh, sadly, we have some women who come into power who um, uh, don't actually engage other women. There are same Prime Minister and Margaret Thatcher was one such example in um, in the UK. She was a very great leader, but she didn't actually really embrace uh, the other women in her. In fact, there were no women in her cabinet, I think. Uh, so it, it's an interesting factor. And for me, it's about synergy as well. So synergy is, is pulling together all the parts into something more than the individual parts. Um, and how we can find those examples out there. Um, I came across a, a company, and I would love to send any of you the video, which they were these this man and woman who actually were husband and wife. I didn't realize that, but she was the CEO and he was the CTO. But they changed the environment of their organization by just having honest conversations. And I don't mean just, but it, it took some time. But when they employees reviewed it they said you know when they started this process we didn't really believe this was going to work we were kind of hmm, suspicious you know what's going on why, why are they being open and and they they put up clear values and everybody would have these regular conversations and over a couple of years they changed the environment so amazingly that every employee did 100 percent more than they did before because they just loved being there and they felt honoured and valued, and that for me, I think, is the is the profit equation. So going to you, Robert, about you know, what what is what what pain are we? What, what is the pain of misunderstanding? What is the pain of toxic behaviour? Obviously, but what is the pain of malfunction in terms of relationships in a business? And and when people don't get on or don't know what the hell's going on, they don't they don't produce as much. They don't. They're not as creative. They're not as innovative. So in um, Corporate Heart, uh, where Philip works with me, and we look at a whole cycle of interventions that slowly do what this, these couple did in their organisation. They change the, the, the music of the business, going back to the metaphor of the orchestra. They, they changed it so that people started doing uh, what, um, what Queen has said, you know, start helping people to understand their part in what's going on. I just feel we've got to a, um, a very dangerous part of the world where we're getting so fixated on polarized differences. It's either you or me, I'm either right, or you, or you're, and you're wrong, or whatever it is. 
that we uh, are not focused on harmony. So again, think about what one step you would do to make a difference in your own life. And as a collective, as we come into the end here, as a collective, my desire for each of us and as a collective to position ourselves as keynote wisdom information. I don't know how you would qualify that, but um, I'm looking to get into those conferences like the one in Morocco. I was, I could have gone, I just, there was no funding, no sponsorship, so I just cannot afford to get there. Um, but it's, it's places like that where I want our names to be heard. I'm working on that every day. Um, and the, we can do that with the G100, but also with our own businesses and our collective voice about harmony. I started this in May 2022 when I did a keynote saying goodbye to equality, hello, harmony. And I still believe that harmony is the underpinning for social justice and probably many, many uh, challenging conversations ahead. Um, but they need to be more immediate because the world is cracking up as far as I can see. <laughs> and um, and I, for one, don't want to see that happen. So I think the, the thing for me is, um, is to find the key players the early adopters who are high level influencers. And if there's any resource that you have to find those, then let's put that collectively together. Um, I'm actually planning to come to England next week, Philip. Oh, great. Well, Amazing. Good meet. <laughs> well, kind of kind of an emergency. I just oh. I need to see my family and one of my very close friends has got cancer so I went to see her but I've decided that I'm going to do that um so um I want to find I want to find the keynote places anywhere in the world where we can put that together um and whether it's ideally a man and a woman I I'm I'm willing to step up and uh present on any stage. I've been on Daniel's podcast. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I I want to make sure that um, we get heard because harmony is, thank you, Robert, um, got a piece of, she of sheet music in there. Um, and also my, my husband wrote a song called Smiles emerging from the uh, uh, smiles emerging from the darkness, um, which I posted up on LinkedIn today. Um, and the, the words from that are very appropriate. Uh, so I'd love you to read that. I will send that to you. Um, but it was written 10 years ago, uh, but only published a year ago. But the words are, where is all the, where's all the good news? Where's the helping hand? Where are the smiles we used to see? They've got to be here somewhere. Um, thank you, Philip. Um, Dylan, I called you Daniel. My apologies. It's all right. I'm a bit distracted at the moment. <laughs> thank you, Philip. That's okay. <laughs> See, now that's good behavior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I never, I never mind knowing that I've made a mistake. So I'm very happy people tell me so in a nice way. Thank you. Um, so what was I saying? I've lost track okay. of where I was. You were saying about coming over to the UK and looking for keynote oh, yeah. places well, to speak. Yes, and, and I really want to uh, accelerate some of these things. Um, I know many of you were involved. We had a, um, a question a couple of weeks ago about, you know, if you had 24 hours of global power, what would you do with it to support women and raise the, the value of women? There's a group in London that deal with that. I want to see if I can find them. I think we just want, I just want to make sure that um, we're all working towards the same end. And I'm very happy to promote any of us to be out there as world wisdom deliverers. Um, and, uh, you know, to take the message to a higher level. And I don't know how to do it. I mean, I've got some ideas, 
Um, but if there is any ideas that, that you have, then let's put them all in the pot and take it forward. We'll say. You had your hand up, Mosse. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, okay. My apologies. What I'm saying is, I think it's a novel idea what you're saying, especially uh, by working with the embassies uh, in third world countries, for instance, in Africa. You know, within the embassy, they have a division where they can work with uh, major uh, companies so they can sponsor. And then having this keynotes available in different region, we can be able to work with that. So long as we have the unity and then, uh, you know. Well, thank you. And one of the things um, I've been wanting to get is to, you know, put together. Um, we've got some amazing um, illustrations now, which um, I don't know whether you've seen, all of you have seen, but just very quickly, um, and given what we've said about um, scripts, Robert, we actually, we, I say collective we, because Christine actually did this. But Christine asked, um, Christine actually asked um, AI to create four images for our archetypes. And for those of you who know the archetypes, the one on the top left is a ruler. The one below him is a philosopher. Top right is a magician woman and bottom is the sovereign. And we used these in our workshop and really it all about creating conversations without judgment, anger or coercion. So this is really what we were looking at is how to understand these archetypes. And these are, there are scripts behind all of these and there are illustrations now. I want to say my gratitude to Christine for understanding how to run the platform. I don't know how the platform that you use to create these images works, but it's amazing. Um, and I would, I'd be very happy to, to send those to all of you so that you can see them. But we're starting to really look at like the music score, the improv, these the scripts, what we want to do is to find some real live action places where we can take these into the into the the, the world that can see them. I've got access to lots of platforms. I, I need to have some help and Hadassah's been helping me a lot with um, um, detail and things like that. You'll be pleased with this, Philip, because Philip's also my detail man here. <laughs> Um, but all of you helped me enormously, and um, uh, and I, I want to kind of draw those together. So Christine, who's a sovereign, has been bringing in this beautiful um, archery, uh, archery, art, artistry. Um, Hadassah uh, is um, is extremely well organized magician, um, and Philip is my. My 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 mentor and my my um what are you Philip you <laughs> you you my um he keeps me on track that's what he does and Robert I really love your um, way of looking at things I think we could learn a lot more um, structure into what we're doing um, and Clara is a fireball in England <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, we can bring all these qualities to anything you need us to do in South Africa, um, Cosy. So um, that was really good. And thank you, Dylan, stroke Daniel. I shall always think of you, Daniel. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and Mose is down the road in Las Vegas and he, he's, he's a, a, an amazing support. And so um, I have got a lot on my mind because I only just decided yesterday that I was really going to come to England and I haven't got it organised yet. Um, so I, I need to uh, get my act together here. Um, so I want to just thank you all for coming. I will send you the replay and and the, the notes. I hope you've saved the notes because you just saved the chat and the side there. Um, but I am reviewing all 
the notes that you sent me, Robert. I really think that the I need a we need a plan of action before the end of the year to start the new year. And I want to know your views on how to expand the World Wisdom Circle. Over the time, we have had a lot more people since the beginning of COVID when we started going online. And um, I really need some support to how to harness all of those who are interested mm. so that it's useful and valuable to them. And I don't necessarily want to talk about that now because it's 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 too much. My brain's just uh, gone a bit frazzled. <laughs> um, but I think the ideas that have come up are really, really brilliant. And um, the next Wisdom Circle won't be till December. And I'm not quite sure what's going to happen between then and now. So um, I want to keep you all informed and to invite your... Uh, understanding i think that's what i need uh, any 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 last thoughts before we go well i need to say that i'm really grateful for these wisdom circles over attending them over the last year and a, well nearly two years now um and to see how they're growing and you know the people the quality and caliber of people that us attending that 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 gives me great hope and I think you know we can as you say create a really fabulous plan of action going forwards individually and collectively under the auspices of the world wisdom cell because I think we'll be doing a lot of good in a oh, time yeah. when the when the world really actually needs a, a light a candle a candle light to lead forward for for new possibilities because as we all see, you know, it's very easy to fall into polarity, which actually doesn't help anybody. And, you know, if we're going to throw a few fireballs out there, let's let them be fireballs of peace to light a new way. <laughs> there you are. There's a very female uh, approach to the world, fireballs of peace. Um, <laughs> I think for me, it, it's always about listening and absorbing and that's mm -hmm. what I feel my, my role is. I need to absorb all these things and move forward. But I totally trust that we are here for the right reasons and that we are part of something that is uh, necessary and urgent in the world. And, and that's really where I'm coming from at the moment. So I really want to appreciate you and um, just close this meeting now. And I will trust that by the mid-December, if we meet again, or if not mid-January or before that, we'll, we'll have some action plans to do. And and please just let me know what your thoughts are on uh, early adopters of significant. Thank you for the heart, Robert. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, all of you. And I remember I posted Jim's song up on LinkedIn, so please go and um, do some likes on that. I'd appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. I was just going to stay on for five minutes. Oh, well, that's... I, I, I got to go. Uh, oh, okay. Clark. No, that's fine. I was just going to find I'll, out when you were. I'll yeah, catch but... up with you about England. I'll catch up with you about England. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Philip. Bye, Bye Mercy.